Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. In front of me are two Age of Sigmar armies, our newest spearheads. We're really enjoying the game Spearhead. A few weeks ago, we bought some spearhead boxes. The one that caught Nick's eye was the Flesh Eater Quartz, the newest faction from this year, 2024, in this nice, slim, stylish spearhead box. The army that caught my eye was the Ogre Ma Tribes, in this humongous, gigantic box, this box is three of three of these boxes would fit in this one singular box. And that is because these ogre models are old. When I got my hands on the sprues, I was actually shocked at how old they are. These ogres are from 2004. This army is 20 years older than this army. And they kind of hold up. I mean, not really, but but they're not. There's a lot of stuff here that I was really pleasantly surprised by and a bunch of stuff. These guys took forever to build because every single one of them had flaws that I needed to correct. Also, the reason that this box is so thick is this sprue right here. I got these two sprues. This set of sprues builds two ogres and that is it. And so six of this sprue came in this box. And then there's multiple sprues for building. So there's the Ogre Gluttons, and then there's the Lead Belchers, and then there's the Mornfang Riders, and the Battle Cannon, or Big Gun, or Chonky Gun, or Gunzilla, or whatever this guy's called. And then of course you got the Leader, the Tyrant. But yeah, this one sprue only builds two guys. Looking at looking back at 2004 versus the modern guys, I mean, obviously the new sprues have a lot more miniature, uh, a lot more parts per like room on the sprue. Although that doesn't necessarily mean more parts. Looking online, the number of components that came in this box is actually higher than this box. I think this box came or no, it's the the gluttons versus the crypt ghouls. The Crypt Ghouls have, I think, like exactly 100 parts when you buy a, a box of 10 Crypt Ghouls. Six Ogre Gluttons, it's like 140 bits. Although, to be fair, an incredible number of those bits are going to be these same three knives or these three same three hammers duplicated six times. And that, I really, one thing I really appreciate about the Ogres and how incredibly old they are is I've got 10 guys right here. I've got six gluttons and four lead belchers. They all have the exact same feet. There is right foot forward and left foot forward. And that is it for posability and for just variety. Where, you know, every single one of these Crypt Ghouls is completely unique and it looks super cool. And they've got little bones and little shards and little boils and little loincloths where every single one of these, these guys have the same pants. And not only are they the same pants, but they're the mirror of each other. Which I I think back in the day, Games Workshop did an awful lot with a little. Because I, I one thing that I built that's really, really old is the old Orc Boys brew. And one really frustrating thing about the Orc Boys is once you have like a hundred, you start to notice like, oh yeah, this is the Orc pants that have the patch on the left butt cheek. And then you start to see that left butt cheek patch all over the place, no patches on these guys, no rips, like they're just simple. And so even though there's only two pairs of legs in these 10 guys, you know, half and half are mirrors of each other, it, they look good. They look really nice. You wouldn't really notice. They all just look like they're just marching forward. And then for the weapons, I had to do a lot to get some variety in the weapons because there's three sword, or no, there's only two sword arms and they're both right arms. And then there's three club arms and they're all left arms. And so it's really hard to get some variety. And frustratingly, the arms don't fit on really good. So for every single one of these ogres, I had to do a bunch of putty work to kind of fill in the obnoxious seams that are going on on their backs. And like, it's a problem. Like I have been building Warhammer armies for 10 years. And so making these guys exactly how I wanted them in my head was doable because I have so much experience under my belt. If these were my very first Warhammer models, probably wouldn't have turned out 
great. And that's kind of a problem like these guys. If you follow the instructions, they're going to look like this and they're going to look great. Where these guys also the instructions are horrible. The, literally, the instructions don't even tell you how to put together these lead belchers. It gives you an example of how to put together this guy. And then after that, you just have to assume, OK, two halves of each cannon and one loose arm. And I don't think they, they are all unique. So you only build these four cannons. You kind of if I could totally see somebody cutting all the parts off the sprue and then being like, which loose arm goes to which cannon? And it becomes a problem. There's a ton. There's like it's it's a weird situation because I, I really like the new modern kits. But there's something here. There's something here that is extra special. Back in the Diz A, Games Workshop, we're like, you guys, you guys need to make a whole new faction ogres. All right, what do we have to work with? You can make seven sprues. Make an entire faction out of just seven sprues. And so the design team had to be like, uh, what are we going to do? OK, well, we we can make any number of ogres happen if we use two sprues, two of our sprue allowance to make two ogres. And then with those ogres, we can make another sprue and that sprue becomes the glutton sprue. We can make one extra sprue and it can become the lead belcher sprue. We can make one more sprue and it becomes the iron gut sprue. They, and they just they made it work. And the way they made it work is so clever and interesting and kind of endearing. And they like it seems like they always knew they couldn't do a lot. These Morn Fangs, the actual Morn Fangs themselves are mirrors of each other, which probably saved a lot of sculpting or I, I assume they're digitally sculpted. They must be, but they don't. There's a lot of aspects of these guys that don't feel digitally sculpted. Also, just one problem with these guys is they got this really nice fur going all over them, but they just couldn't make it happen on their butts. So I sculpted fur onto their butts because it was just weird that there's just so much missing fur on their butts. So I had to make that happen. But like the the two Morn Fangs are mirrors of each other. And then there's only there's there's like two sets of riding legs. And then you I kind of made the upper bodies work by taking bits of the glutton kit and then kit bashing. I did a lot of cutting a weapon off of a hand and then replace pinning a new weapon on there to have something a little bit more interesting going on. Like there's a, a lot of little tinkering, but I feel like I enjoyed that tinkering a lot more than like when I just followed the instructions. There was a lot more creativity and and like just a lot more enjoyment of Boy, running into a whole bunch of problems and then figuring out what I'm going to do with those problems. And then once I'm done, you know, I was I was pretty proud of myself after I got the fur on the tushies. I, sculpting fur on tushies is not something I usually do. And it took a couple tries to get this fur, but it, it was really nice. On the Morn Fangs, they actually sit on these things really high up. They have big old booster chairs, which I didn't really like the look of. So I took my Dremel tool and I ground the chair down so that it vaguely looks like they're actually sitting on the animal. Oh, the cannon. This cannon. Number one, it's awesome to get an absolute tank in a starter box. But this is like so many pieces. This little this little thing going on back here, the cart that is being pulled by the horse. It's not a horse. It's a rhino, a rhino. Mammoth is so clever. The the way this guy sits on here, he's got a little key in the bottom of his foot. And actually key is a very apt word because you look at this and it's actually a door. And the key that his foot goes into is the keyhole in the door. It's so clever and it's so interesting. And I haven't really seen Games Workshop do stuff like that because usually everything just works so well. You know, you've got a weird misshapen void in a shoulder that is the perfect match for the weird misshapen lump that is on the other guy's hand. And so you did a little glue, a little glue and you stick it in. It can only fit in one way. But because this is so weird, I could build a bunch of these and I would never have to have any overlap. And it seems like Games Workshop really took that to heart because there's all there's alternate head options for the little mammoth guy. There's alternate options for what like metal is attached to these horns. There's all sorts of different bits and bops to go on the actual wagon. I could build probably three of these before I had to do any sort of real conversion 
before it would start to look samey same in an army. And that that is something I do miss out of some of the newer kits because as awesome as these bat guys look and on the Games Workshop website, it does say it comes with a whole bunch of head options so that all of your whatever these are knights look good. They're, it's going to be the same guy with a different head here and there. Like, is that, there's something I wonder if there's a middle ground. Obviously, things being more efficient is better. Being able to fit an army in a little box is probably better than I mean, this barely fit on the store shelf. It's so big. It's hilarious. Like when I go to Sam's Club to buy my special K cereal, I get I get a box very similar to this. And it's like it's it's two bags of cereal. I don't know why I'm talking about special K, but the, the box is way too big. These guys were obnoxious to put together, but I really, really had a good time. And I wonder if some of these eccentricities and de design philosophies have kind of gotten lost in, oh, well, we're making these new units and we can have however much room on sprues we want for those units where like being up against the wire and being like, we have to make an entire faction out of only a few sprues. How far can we stretch our resources to give people as much stuff as possible? I mean, there's just random knives. I don't know where you're supposed to glue them. There, the instructions never say an anything about these knives, but I'll probably glue them somewhere. Like they're, they're neat little knives. I used one of them for one of my gluttons. I took the screamy hand and then I, I cut off I cut off a bunch of the weapon. I missed a seam line. I cut off the rest of the weapon and then I glued on that knife and I made it look a little bit more like a disgusting cleaver. And I read like this one guy, this one guy, I probably spent an hour on him and it was fun. Ah, and it was probably more fun than I've had with a lot of modern games or trap plastics. And this guy is 20 years old and he has problems and he has flaws, but I kind of, I don't know. I don't know what is the right answer. Like this guy, the Tyrant, he's a monopose kit and I really like him. I think he looks fantastic, but I would not want the gluttons to just be monopose good looking guys. Even if they looked really good, it really puts me off when I'm working on models and I see two of the identical guy or the identical guy where they have different helmets. And often it's like a slightly different shape to the same helmets. That's why I have a really hard time getting into like 3D print games because you'll have like, oh, you've got this swarm of monsters. Actually, you have three pairs of the same two monsters with their tail going in the exact same direction. I remember when I was a little kid and I had dinosaur toys. It really upset me when a dinosaur would be like looking left because then when I'm playing with the dinosaur, I don't know why I didn't have creativity, but I would be like, well, he's always He's always charging from the left because that's the way his head's pointing. It just it just puts me off where these ogres, they're not particularly posable, but with enough fussing and because I have to do that fussing. I think that's that's the real thing is like there's I, I used to build. I built a giant Space Marine army with the old models and those guys, they've kind of got the action figure posing going on, but I built most of them normal because it's easy enough to do that. But with these ogres, when I started putting them together, I'm like, oh, these are just not going to go together well at all, are they? So then I thought, well, if it's going to be a hassle, let's really make it a party. Let's let's try to make every single guy unique and interesting and have a little extra something going on. Let's shorten these saddles. Let's put some extra fanciness on the big gun. Like it was it was really good. And I kind of feel like that's a little bit missing from some of the more modern Games Workshop kits. Not all of them. There's still some really good ones. The Blade Guard Veteran, and by Blade Guard Veteran, I mean Sword Brethren for the Black Templar, is a beautiful Space Marine kit with tons and tons and tons of options. You could build 50 of those kits and all 50 of them would look slightly, it would look pretty different. But there's a lot of kits that are, I just, I think I built the Stern Guard Veteran not that long ago for Space Marines and kind of just they kind of even though they are bolt together action figure space marines there's not there's not a lot of meat on those sprues but good old 2004 ogres man did i have a really good time assembling these monstrosities of kits and i'm really excited to like be spewing how much i enjoyed this these guys have got days have got to be numbered right 
20 years old still on the Games Workshop web store, I would assume that there is an Ogre Maw Tribe refresh in the works. And I'm nervous about it because uh, is it gonna it's is it gonna be this? Is it gonna be the same thing? Is it just gonna be this but cooler? And I don't even know if these guys look that old. I think they hold up really, really well. There's some stuff like the fur texture on these guys is pretty lame. But other than that, there's nothing I look at on these guys and I think whew, product of its time. <laughs> I think they look really, really sharp and really snazzy. Another another weird little thing about these guys is the way their arms go together. They're not like the orc boy or the space marine. Just cut a flat line right here in the shoulder and then glue it on. It's kind of a, a like a, a V shape into a V groove. So the, when you put on an arm, there's no posability whatsoever. And so with only I think how many sprue, how many arms came on this sprue? I think you got two lefts and two rights. So two lefts and two rights. How do you make 10 interesting guys and not really have any repeats? It was hard to do, but I think I was really glad that I was working on the spearhead because I also had extra arms from the Mornfang box. I had extra arms from the gun box. Like I had I had a bunch of extra stuff to work with, which was really, really nice. Where if I had started with just a box of gluttons, I would have six sets of the same two pairs of arms and I would just have to make it work. But yeah, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you've worked on some old school Games Workshop minis and you've worked on new school Games Workshop minis. Like, I feel like there's they should meet somewhere in the middle. I don't think new is necessarily miles better than the old. And this is probably the widest gap you'll find in the Games Workshop catalog. 2004? 2024, I think they're they're pretty close. Almost as cool as our website. Our website is the place to find our merch and to support us with a membership. Members get one credit per month to spend on the current terrain pack or any previous terrain pack. New this month is the Clone Expansion, a part two to our spaceship interior with new wall sections for building out the grizzly facilities of a cloning laboratory complete with examination slash autopsy tables, cloning bays, and new doors. And the cloning doesn't stop there. The cloning towers are macabre monoliths drooping with pods full of fresh recruits or test subjects depending on the needs of the mad scientists who operate them. If you want to experience some old school games workshop, I guess I can only recommend the ogres because don't buy anything for old world. Holy cow, are they charging some crazy money for those old, old sprues. I feel like this box, kind of a deal. It's, you know, it's expensive. It's a spearhead box, but it's a little cheaper than 40K. And I mean, just look at the girth of what you get. Look at these weenie little zombie-esque guys. And then over here, we've got the big, strong ogres. Ah, also, Games Workshop, when you're updating the ogres, I've seen a, they've made some stuff for War Cry and a couple of little things here and there. They, they're starting to make the proportions a little bit more realistic and the heads a little bit smaller. Nobody wants real. I want an army of Shreks, though that is the proportions. That is peak physical ogre form right there. Don't change a thing. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching. Also, these aren't zombies, these are ghouls.